Hello, welcome to the module devoted to authorship and peer review. In this introduction, we're going to talk about authorship issues in scientific publishing and how to resolve them in a fair and ethical way. Authorship is one of the most contentious issues in scientific publishing. It often precipitates differences of opinion, and you need to prepare yourself for these ethical challenges. So pay special attention to the readings and to the issues that we're going to review in this introductory le lecture. What you will find is that the rewards of authorship in the long run far outweigh the hard work and the challenges involved in the eth ethical and equitable distribution of authorship credits. Why is authorship important in scientific publishing? Authorship and scientific journals in particular provide certification in a public way of the truth of a publication. So if the article is submitted, it's subjected to peer review, it is evaluated by an editor who has extensive experience in that area. It is revised systematically uh, and it's published in a reputable journal. All of these things imply that when somebody goes on the internet or into a library and picks up that journal issue that has your article, all of this implies that they can put faith in the truth, in the validity, in the accuracy of that particular publication. And that's why authorship is so important. It's a responsibility, but also you can take pride when you are an author of an article published in a scientific journal because the journal is certifying that your article is accurate, truthful, and important. Authorship also has a practical side where it represents the equitable assignment of credit. Credit is due to the people often in proportion to the amount of work that they put, they put into developing a project that leads to an article, but it's also in proportion to the creativity and the originality of the thinking that went into that article. Either way, authorship should reflect the originality, creativity, amount of effort in a substantial way that is devoted to that article. It should not reflect uncreative activities, lack of effort, or the types of activities that go into uh, a project and a publication that may not represent a substantive contribution. Other reasons why authorship is important are because they reflect the productivity of the author, they can lead to career advancement and promotions, and they carry a great deal of prestige. But there are many problems along the way to publishing an article. Uh, one of them in terms of authorship is the failure to involve potential authors. So if somebody was involved at one stage of the project but dropped out uh, and they were forgotten, when the article is being drafted, they should be included as potential authors if they can fulfill the criteria for authorship and if they contributed substantially to the further development of the manuscript. Often people fail to credit 
contributors in an appropriate way because they're forgotten or excluded along the way. And in other cases, some people can be credited with gift authorship for work that they didn't do. And that presents serious ethical problems. Another thing about authorship is that uh, relative contributions are sometimes difficult to judge. And if people have made more contributions than uh, is reflected in the way that authorship is determined, for example, the first author is somebody who didn't contribute the most, or uh, the second author is somebody who uh, contributed less than the third author, uh, in those instances, it creates conflicts, it creates uh, bad feelings, and can lead to further problems in publishing an article. And ambiguity about this process is sometimes our worst enemy. So the readings and what we're going to review in this lecture provide you with a way of reviewing that ambiguity. Starting with the conventions for assigning authorship. They can be done uh, particularly when everybody made e equal contributions in alphabetical order or reverse alphabetical order. But generally, authorship is assigned in terms of relative contributions with the person who make, made the most contributions and drafted the manuscript being listed first. Sometimes we have corporate authorship where just the name of a particular project is given and then the authors are listed uh, often in alphabetical order. And some journals are now going to contributorship, <clears throat> which is a way of uh, having authors describe their contributions, both to the editor and sometimes in the publication itself. So there are many ways to define authorship and the relative order of authorship. But the main thing that you need to start out with is the criteria for what constitutes an author who gets listed on a publication and what uh, constitutes a contribution that doesn't quite meet the criteria for authorship. These can be defined in different ways by different committees and organizations. We'll go through a few of them, but ultimately the lead author and the people who are collaborating on a publication need to come to some agreement, ideally at the beginning of the project, as to how they are going to define authorship. In simple terms, it means that all of the people who are listed agree that they can take personal responsibility uh, for defending the content of the paper if it is challenged by readers. And it's not only challenged scientifically, so people want to know about your statistical analysis or how you recruited the subjects and other things like that. Uh, so you need to be familiar with all aspects of this, although you can depend on a statistician who takes primary responsibility for that one section. You also need to be able to defend the article publicly. So all authors should be able uh, to make a presentation and to answer questions. Uh, the content needs to be taken into account. Often the content is particular to a, uh, one type of expertise, but you need to be responsible for all of the content of the manuscript, although, as I mentioned, not in as much detail. Authorship from the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors uh, means that you need to take personal responsibility and public, and all the authors should have contributed to the conception of the uh, research or the scholarly publication, its design or the acquisition of data or its interpretation, and the drafting of the article and the final approval of the published version. All of these criteria are important to discuss among your 
your potential authors, the number and the order of the authors need not be decided in advance. Often you can uh, create a tentative list of potential authors. You can confer with them and you can revisit the order of the authors and who gets included uh, several times before the paper is finalized. I was in a position working with a group of authors writing a book where I was designated as the primary author uh, at the beginning. I did a lot of the work, but as it turned out, one of the other co-authors did more work than I did. When it came to publishing the book, we had an open discussion among the authors and we agreed that the person who did a lot of the original thinking, uh, wrote, took responsibility for uh, writing more than other authors, uh, deserved to be listed as first author. So we made that decision. If we had gone with the order of the authorship at the beginning, there would have been bad feelings and it would have been inappropriate for uh, myself to be listed as the first author. The International Society of Addiction Journal Editors <clears throat> has guidelines for authorship credits, and they're similar to uh, ICGME. And they are uh, the ones that are listed in many other criteria. The main thing is that the authors take a look at these uh, or look at a chapter in a book or an article that reviews the criteria for authorship and have an open discussion. And that's often a way of preventing abuses. Students and postdocs are in a particularly vulnerable position because of pressure on publishing and ignorance of the publication process and the power relations that exist between themselves and uh, their mentors, uh, the lack of timeliness of a publication, which um, may make a mentor uh, worried that the paper and the, the findings are not going to get reported because of delays, um, who gets paid uh, to work on a project may uh, be considered a criterion for authorship when it should not be included. And uh, all of this leads to the need for students and postdocs to be advocates for written guidelines that govern a particular department or education program. And uh, in the book, Publishing Addiction Science, we have such a set of guidelines. To determine authorship, you need to recognize that the process of putting together a publication, indeed the process of conducting research in research teams, is a social process. It requires interaction. It requires specific communications as well as um, less formal uh, communications, which sometimes can lead to miscommunication. You need to establish expectations. Expectations for openness and fairness and ethicality. And one way to do this, as I mentioned, is to cir circulate uh, a list of criteria or a checklist for authorship or an article that explains what common thinking is about determining authorship in an ethical and fair way. If you do that and you discuss it in a group setting, often people that are willing to take credit for things that they did not do uh, will admit that they didn't do anything and therefore they shouldn't be listed as an author. And that's in part because they're too embarrassed by what other people are thinking. But you need to be able to uh, provide the um, guidelines that would lead them to make such a statement that they should not be involved if they didn't do anything. This can occur during the planning stage for 
a manuscript. If a senior member of your group is uh, responsible, you can give them information and say that you learned in a course or you read this article and you think this would be a proper way to proceed with the determination of authorship. And the best way to do that is to have a meeting of all potential authors, discuss the outline for the paper, the timetable, and who should be included. You distribute that outline with the message that uh, the criteria for authorship need to be met and that these contributions will be reviewed periodically. That might help to motivate people. Uh, you distribute the policies and the publications and uh, following discussion, you go back and start drafting the manuscript. In the drafting stage, you draft the first draft, uh, ask people to comment, you find out who responds, who contributes, you ask all possible authors to describe their contributions. In many cases, where large numbers of people are working on the same proje project, you're not necessarily going to know who did what. And by asking people to write a short paragraph on what their contributions are, this is another way for determining uh, who qualifies for authorship. It also is a way to get people who would take credit for what they didn't do to back out and, and to admit that they don't deserve to be on that publication. Um, you also hear statements from people which are blatantly unethical. Statements like, well, we should include uh, another person because they are a graduate student who needs a publication for their resume, uh, or we should include the head of the center or the department because they claim that they always should be on the publication because their grants are paying for the support staff. Um, those kinds of arguments need to be addressed. And the best way to do it, again, is to have written guidelines uh, for your center, your department, your organization, or uh, articles that spell out what is appropriate and what is inappropriate that everybody agrees to. One of these things is simply a checklist uh, which describes what constitutes contributions that merit authorship and what constitutes secondary contributions and tertiary contributions. And these checklists are available in the readings for this course. Finally, once you've gone through this process of having a planning meeting, uh, a meeting after the first draft is circulated, uh, you need to finalize the manuscript and review the contributions, review the, author, the uh, order of the authors, and make sure that all authors have read and commented on the final copy. More and more journals require that each author listed be prepared uh, to sign a statement saying that they were part of this process and they read the final version of the manuscript. And that gets back to one of the key criteria for authorship, which is taking public responsibility. As you will uh, learn about in some of the readings and the videos, in some cases, people who are listed as authors, particularly on major publications, have later regretted that because they didn't pay attention to the process. They took advantage of other people by listing themselves when they didn't know what was going on in the publication. The publication turned out to be fraudulent, and now their name is on it, and they're embarrassed, if not liable, to lawsuits. So in summary, to prevent authorship problems, have early agreement on the roles of the contributors and the collaborators, and um, how you're going to arrive at authorship credits through weighing the relative contributions of different authors. The lead author 
It needs to periodically review the status of authorship credits with other people, and the lead author, if it's not you, needs to be reminded of the criteria that are now considered standard in uh, scientific publishing. And the best way to do that is to use the scientific society guidelines that have been promoted both in the addiction field and in other areas of science. If you do that, you'll avoid a lot of problems and you will be rewarded not only for yourself but for others in giving credit where it's due.